Welcome back. This is the Mudisa Network, and thanks for joining me. And my guests are here with me, and we're going to talk about data. The United Nations says it's a human right, and studies have shown that economic development is directly linked to access to free data. Government claims data costs are starting to fall, but question is, are the costs falling? My guests are Thibaut Touch, he's radio personality and CEO of digital radio station Touch HD. Touch, welcome. And my good old friend, Duncan McLeod, publisher and editor of Tech Central. Again, pleasure to have you with us here, gentlemen. Thank you. Let's take a look at what transpired earlier this week when politician turned presenter for just one day. Though I must say, the IFP's Mkule Kothengwa spoke to Deputy Communications Minister Pinky Kekana. And she told him that data is actually starting to fall. Government has done very well in ensuring that the, the ICT sector rollout in as far as infrastructure is concerned is done. But secondly, we have created an enabling environment for business to thrive in the ICT sector, but also that must not happen at the expense of the viewer. And what we have now done uh, on the data must fall issue, ICASA then came out with the, the end user service charter, yes. where they looked into the whole sector and the call that you are making that when is data falling? And through this process, data has started to fall. Well, but the IFP's Mkwila Kotlengwa did not just accept that and roll over. He says identifying or investigating the problem of data does not amount to a solution. Don't preempt what the investigation is doing. Firstly, we looked into what can be done in the meantime, and that's why the charter came in but to make sure that initially, in the meantime, listen, is not addressing no, the cost initially, of data, which is the expensive service provider on the poor. Or, no, listen to this. Service uh, 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 industry was accessing your data, whether. Uh, uh, you, you gave them permission or not. Now what ICASA has done is to make sure through the charter that no one goes into my data without my consent. But that Which data that achievement. we are buying, then you are, are not about, taken by surprise. But the data person, you are speaking about, I still have to buy at a high cost. Let me put it to you this way, and why this Until is fundamental. Until we get the investigation done. What are you investigating I, when we all know the realities that are out there? Well, I suppose most South Africans feel exactly the same way that Mr. Tlengwa feels, that we hear all about investigate process and this and the other. What we want is that data must fall. Touch, what do you think? I, I think this has become a tedious journey now to push the responsibility of the price of data to networks. Um, observe, uh, when you observe what's happening on the plateau, uh, you have a regulatory body which is mandated to do its primary job, which is to regulate or protect the majority of the citizens' rights. If the, you know, the South African citizens are making an outcry on the issue of data, um, one's primary responsibility as ICASA is to ensure that you regulate on the price and, 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 and work together with the networks to bring the prices down. So the issue of data must fall being linked to networks, it's purely in the hands of ICASA. The government must get to a point where they allow you know, the, uh, the, the voices of the people to be heard and implemented. There's no need for investigations as sure. you know, the deputy minister. But, but here's a situation then, and Duncan, you are familiar with it. I don't know how many years we've been talking about this. You see. And that's why I did not even start with you. I went yeah. to touch first because I, I'm just wondering what kind of question am I going to ask you about data? Yeah. But since we've had this conversation over the years, how much has changed over time? On the mobile side, probably not an enormous amount. I think the smaller operators have come to the market with some pretty aggressive plans, so C and Telcom. Uh, I think MTN and Vodacom uh, are, are priced above those two operators, and uh, there has been a reluctance to cut, to cut prices. There have been some cuts. Vodacom, for example, cut out of bundle rates from a very high 2 rand a megabyte, I think, to 99 cents recently. Uh, but th those are still extortionate numbers. Mm. Um, uh, and I think the, the, the question that needs to be asked is, is, is what's wrong? Why are mm. prices so high? Mm. And I, I think the, the, the populist cry is for the regulator to come in and say, you're not allowed to charge as much. You've got to cut prices. But I think that can be quite dangerous as well. Uh, if, if you enter a space, enter an environment where the regulator is telling private enterprise how much they're allowed to charge, you can end up 
uh, having damaging consequences. I mean, we saw what happened in in Venezuela, in Zimbabwe, places like that, where they sort of yeah. Oh, well, but I'm sure touch will disagree. But it was successful. You, it was successful in in other parts of Europe. Um, I, I I think if you know we look at the model of Icasa under. The former minister, Yanda Lolo, they received about 493 million for their annual budget alone to operate. And you. Who is that? The, the, this is ICASA. ICASA, right? Yes. Yeah. You have every means to deploy the right people to come up with a data codessa. And we have a round table discussion where whatever you pr propose as a. As, as, as a uh, uh, cost f structure should not hurt the private sector, but also big companies in private sector also have a mandate to ensure that they can support SMMEs to also play in the space. But right now, this monopoly uh, it kills small businesses. One, it also marginalizes and makes ICASA irrelevant for not doing their primary job. So there has to be some form of a cohesive approach yeah so re reducing the price of now, meat. I, I want to, I want to understand how the price is structured in South Africa because comparisons have been made not not only with European countries but other African countries yeah. that are not performing as well uh, or not the size of South Africa's economy for instance I think Kenya and Nigeria are examples that are always given in this regard so when you look at the pricing structure in those countries compared to South Africa why is they are so expensive here you've got to look at um, you've got to compare apples and apples and uh, I think what, what we've seen in the past is is uh, comparisons have been done where they take the cheapest price in one particular market India say and then compare it with the most expensive in South Africa credible research that I've seen suggests that pricing mobile data pricing in South Africa is pretty much in the middle average of countries the problem, I think, in South Africa is that um, compared to Europe, North America and elsewhere, where fixed line infrastructure and broad, uh, fiber broadband is very well developed. In South Africa, that's confined to the leafy suburbs of the big cities. Yeah. And the majority of people in South Africa are entirely reliant on the mobile networks to, to, get, to get online. So um, the, the fact that it, we're in the middle tier probably doesn't give a lot of comfort to many South Africans. Uh, because they don't have access to Wi-Fi, to fixed line services, which you find in many other markets. So in the South African context, we have to find ways of driving down mobile prices because that's the way people get online. Well, we've got to find ways. Thank and you. it appears ways are there already, yeah. at least in the big cities, right? With the fiber networks, with the proliferation of Wi-Fi. One would have thought that those are already having an impact on the reduction of data prices. You've made a presentation to Parliament yep. in this regard. Yeah. What, what, what would you expect ICASA to do that you think it's not doing? Um, I think if you know, ICASA and the Communications Department were to score a hat-trick uh, before the elections, there should be some form of a price uh, cut um, if they ever want to anticipate a good result. Because the truth of the matter is we don't need to wait this long. Uh, for the, regulation, the regulatory body to understand what's happening on the grassroots level. The truth of the matter is these, the, some of the bundle packages benefits the elite uh, for those on contracts. The prepaid market is suffering. And the, the majority of South Africans don't have good credit. So if you see this competition with networks that benefits those on contract, it doesn't speak to the core problem where the majority of the people who are on prepaid can't benefit. The gig still costs you over 150 bucks. That's a luxury. So, for me, if you are going to ask people to put a cross on your political party, uh, give them the means to communicate, to make a living, give them the means that protects their basic core needs, which is the ability to communicate. And that's what we should, we should see happening before elections. Otherwise, I generally feel that, uh, 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 you know, we, uh, we will have failed, not even we, I'm not, I don't work for communication, but I feel that the, the, the ICASA's role will be justified if they were to you know, make us an announcement sooner than uh, the end of the year. To but, reduce but what's stopping ICASA from doing that? I mean, the United Nations, for it's, instance, I've already mentioned that. I could be wrong. I it and will I allow more access and more people to participate in the economy. So it makes economic sense in the broadest sense of the word that data prices come down so that more people get to participate. I'd like to speak on the correction. Yeah. I, I, I think when you look at how you, you know, the online e business has posed a threat to the likes of your SOEs like SABC, um, if 
data was to be really affordable. You, one, you'll have the DSTVs who are under threat with the penetration of your Netflix and other online properties. And so I, f I feel like there's, somebody's having a conversation with someone to say, wait a minute, we are not ready to have this type of competition on the market. Hold on, let's get out ducks on the row. Hence, you see, you know, um, the what's set up top boxes, they're also trying to make sure they're in place by next year as well. And all of a sudden, Santec is, you know, expediting the whole process to ensure we're ready for the migration. So somebody must have slept on a job for some time. Well, and they realize that we are on stockage time. Sure. We need to get our ducks on the road. Now, Duncan, what are the arguments that the telcos are making for not reducing the prices? Well, I think the, the reason why prices don't come down is because there's not, not sufficient competition in the market. And I think that the, 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 the issue of data prices in South Africa needs to be dealt with mm. more at a policy level than a regulatory level. Yeah. So I think the, we've got the wrong policies in place. Now, I think the government is trying to address this. The Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services has recently put out the Electronic Communications Amendment Bill. Uh, and we're, we're waiting for a, a new version of that soon. But they are making, the, I think, the right, they've got the right intentions to, to bring down data prices by, by using radio frequency spectrum as the tool for doing it. Um, whether it's being done correctly or not at the moment uh, is, is up for debate. And there's a lot of debate in the industry, and certainly the big operators are very opposed to what is said in the Electronic Communications Amendment Bill. But I think that's the right way to do it. I think you've got to facilitate competition. If, if, you, if you determine that with a duopoly in the South African mobile market in the form of MTN and Vodacom, and that other players can't compete, then that needs to be addre addressed through policy and the clever allocation of spectrum, etc. I'm not sure if studies have been done to uh, establish how much money and opportunities are being lost as a result of this high cost of data. But Touch would know firsthand, in oh, this case with your business, Touch I, HD, I, I, I how has that affected you? Oh, big time. Um, it's without a doubt that Touch HD is one among many other uh, businesses that are still you know, struggling under these uh, uh, exorbitant costs of data. I get a lot of young people who come up with uh, online publications and uh, streaming uh, uh, facilities who are dying every day because they can't sustain their business model under such cost and it's evident that if we were operating you know under uh, well-regulated cost price we'll see a booming in the IT sector so I don't understand when you are listening to uh, someone making a speech to say we want to boost infrastructure and promote entrepreneurship in the IT space but the same door that each should walk through mm -hmm. to enable them to thrive well, you lock it and keep the key well I just, I just want to check if people can afford their data because I'm inviting them to participate in our conversation. Sure. And you can do so, hashtag Modisa Network, if you've got issues, questions, comment to make regarding this question of the high costs of data. Do you believe that it is falling and can it still fall? My guests are here with me, Duncan McLeod and Thibaut Touch.